Hey, I'm Tashaka Armstrong, and thank you for joining us for another tech for the rest of us. So you needed to get some productivity done, and you wanted to be mobile, so you bought an iPad Pro 12.9 inch, and interestingly enough, you now need to purchase a productivity accessory to make your productivity product more productive. Yeah, I know that's a whole lot of productivity. Uh, I needed to do the same, so I looked at Zag Slimbook and Logi's Create keyboard covers to see which one would help me get the most work done and the most comfortably. I do a lot of typing. So we're putting these two bad boys head to head. I'm going to show you which one comes out on top. Let's check it out. When I last put the companies to the test, I came out with a clear winner. This time around, things weren't so simple. The Zag Slimbook is made up of two components, a case and a Bluetooth keyboard. The case is similar to Apple's own silicone protective cases in that it's open face, protecting only the back and sides of the device with the standard cutouts for charging, camera, speakers, volume, and the power button. Unlike the silicone case, it has a slick back, which I am not a huge fan of at all. I'd much rather have something textured or that feels a tad grippy like silicone. Logis Create, on the other hand, is a one-piece affair, much like Apple's own smart keyboard cover and has only two angles it can be used at. This case's outer material is a textured cloth-like water repellent material, making it feel more secure to carry than the Slimbook. One of the best parts of carrying around the 12.9-inch iPad Pro is that despite its size, it's lighter than most laptops, making it a very portable way to get things done. Using the Slimbook and the Create, however, negate that. Putting the iPad Pro into the case, which then attaches to the keyboard half of the Zag Slimbook unit, adds a decent amount of weight to the Pro, which itself is over uh, one and a half pounds, but comes in at just under four pounds inside the Slimbook. Now, to be fair, the Create and iPad Pro together aren't that much lighter. You're looking at a device that doubles the iPad Pro's weight as well, so not light. With the Slimbook, you're going to get the usual complement of function keys for an iOS Bluetooth keyboard, but this one's also backlit and gives you seven colors to choose from at three different brightness levels. Logi's Create works with a smart connector and adds one feature to the function keys that Zag lacks, and that is the ability to control screen brightness. Now, this will seem novel, like a little thing, but Zag's hinge covers part of the bezel area of the iPad Pro, actually making accessing iOS Control Center a bit difficult. Zag's Slimbook feels wonderful to type on. They're known for their quality keyboards, and the Slimbook does not disappoint. Key spacing, pitch, and travel all feel very good for a mobile product. Of course, my preference is always for super clicky mechanical keys, but I've always appreciated Zag's keyboard builds in the mobile space. Logi's Create, on the other hand, though it has island-style chiclet keys like the Slimbook, they feel a bit more shallow in terms of key travel, one and a half millimeters to be exact. And as you can see, the deck is a bit more compact. Depending on how you type and the size of your hands, this could be a good or bad thing for you. For me, I prefer a little bit bigger deck uh, to rest my palms on while I'm typing. Others may not be such a big issue. Uh, between the two keyboard covers, the Zag is definitely more rigid, so typing on a lap or uneven surface feels a bit more stable. You'll definitely experience some flex with the Create. Uh, interestingly enough, you're actually going to get more flexibility from the Slimbook. It can be used at an angle up to 135 degrees and can be used in laptop, tent, or tablet modes. There's only one angle for the Create when it's attached to the smart connector, though you can disconnect it from there and lay it almost flat so that you can use it with the Apple Pen for artwork or taking notes. One thing you won't have to concern yourself with all that much when it comes to the Create is power. Since it's powered through the smart connector, there's nothing to charge. The Slimbook, on the other hand, being a Bluetooth connected device will require you to charge it. The frequency with which you'll have to charge is dependent upon how often you use the backlighting. Without the backlighting, Zag says you'll get two years between charges. Additionally, since it's Bluetooth, you'll actually also get the ability to use the keyboard with three separate Bluetooth devices, which can all be programmed into the one, two, and three number keys on the keyboard. At the end of the day, my decision, I, I know this is going to sound like a cop-out, but it actually is a tough decision. I don't think there's a very clear-cut winner here. For me, even though I'm really bothered by how slick the case is, I'd probably go with Zag Slimbook because of the lack of flex when writing in uneven places and the flexibility, overall flexibility, of the keyboard case. 
At the end of the day, though, both are great keyboard cases and offer a much better alternative, a much better typing alternative to Apple's offering if you're expecting to do any serious work on your iPad Pro. There's just one caveat in making this choice. When removing the iPad Pro from the Zag case, I cracked the corner of the case, and if I had to purchase this, I'd be taking it back for a replacement. I've read of other people on the internet having this issue as well, leading me to believe that the Create may actually be built a bit better for the long haul. So as I stated, for me, it will probably be Zag's Slimbook, mainly because of how rigid it is with the lack of flex. But as I stated, again, got to be careful because when you're taking this thing out of the case, if you're going to take it out from time to time, has been known to crack or there have been some cases where it's cracked. I can't say it's widespread, but I have seen the issue. So you're going to want to take that into consideration. If there are any questions I haven't answered, if there's anything I haven't answered in this video, go ahead and leave me a comment below and I'll get to it. As always, thank you for watching.